Naming ionic compounds. These are examples for ionic compound nomenclature. Okay, so let's start with an overview for how to name inorganic compounds. And so what we're going to do first is write the name of the cation. The cation is always going to come first in an inorganic compound name. Now if the anion is an element, then we're going to name the anion using rule 3. So those are the ones that have the IDE ending, and we're going to write it after the name of the cation. Now, if the anion is a polyatomic ion, and we haven't seen any examples of that yet, then we're just going to write the name of the polyatomic ion after the name of the cation. And then finally, if the cation is a transition metal, then we're going to write the charge you know, that we would write with the cation, we're going to put it between the cation and the anion in the full name of the compound. So we're going to put it in parentheses between the name of the cation and the anion. Okay, so the best way to do this is to just practice. So we're going to name the compound that is formed from calcium and chlorine. Okay, so let's start by identifying our cation here. Okay, main group calcium, calcium 2 plus, okay, so we're going to write the name of the cation first, which is calcium, and now this anion is an element, and it comes from the element chlorine, so we're going to remove this I-N-E ending and add I-D-E, so that's just naming the anion, and so now the anion name is chloride, okay, we're going to check until we're really used to it, we're going to check and make sure calcium is or is not a transition metal, and it is not, of course. It's in group two, so we're going to disregard step three regarding putting the charge in parentheses. And then finally, to write the name of this compound, we're just going to write the name of the cation followed by the name of the anion. And so the name of the compound is calcium chloride. Now notice that this name does not say anything about how many of each element are in this formula. See, there's one calcium and two chloride anions. We don't need to because we know the, cha the charges completely balance. Okay, so let's name this guy. All right. We see that we have the element sodium and oxygen. Okay, they form a compound. And so we're going to write the name of the cation first, which of course is the metal. And so that's just sodium. Okay, and now the anion in this case is also an element, so like I said, we're not going to do examples of a polyatomic yet, but so we have an element and it's oxygen, so we're going to name this anion, we're going to take off that eugen and add IDE, so we're going to end up with oxide. Uh, ask ourselves, is sodium a transition metal? And it's definitely not a transition metal, it's in group one. So we're going to disregard step three, and then finally we're just going to name, write the name of the cation followed by the name of the anion. So the compound name is sodium oxide. Okay, now here's a little bit different one, so take a few minutes and try it. All right, so this guy's just a little bit harder, and part of the reason why is that we don't automatically know the charge on this copper. We have to do a little bit of thinking. But we've identified that we have copper metal, which is a transition metal, and oxygen. And because this is copper metal, you know, it can have various different charges, okay? Now, how do we know what charge this copper has? Well, we have to look at the anion. So we're going to go over to oxygen, and we're going to remember that oxygen almost always forms an anion with a negative 2 charge. So that's a rule we can use. Now, if all of the charges balance in this compound, then if oxygen is minus 2, then what does copper have to be? So it has to be plus 2, right? Because we have to have plus 2 and minus 2, that cancels out. Now if you like algebra, here's just the very simple algebra problem. Here's the anion charge plus this N, which is going to be our charge on our cation, and we're going to solve for N and we get N equals 2. So it ends up being 2 plus. All right, so now we are ready to name the compound. Okay, so our cation name, the full name is copper 2, okay, and we're going to name our oxygen like we did in the previous compound, so we're going to remove the eugen and add IDE to end up with oxide, 
and then we're going to write the whole thing together. So we're going to take the cation name and the anion name, put them together, and notice the charge on the cation is between the cation name and the anion name. So copper to oxide. Okay, so this guy's just a teeny bit different. So see if you can do this one. Use the same procedure as the previous compound. I will tell you that the charge on copper is not the same as it was in the previous compound. Okay, so we have to use the same strategy as before to figure out the charge on copper. Now, oxygen almost always has a negative 2 charge, so we're going to use that rule. Okay, and so we have minus 2 for oxygen. Now, notice this time there's two copper uh, atoms or ions, two copper cations, and so that negative 2 charge is going to be balanced out by an equal amount of positive charge, which would be plus 2, but since there are two copper atoms, we have to split it between the two of them, okay? So each copper is going to have a plus 1 charge. Okay, so the cation name then is copper 1, okay? And the anion name, same procedure, remove the eugen and add the IDE to get oxide. And then finally we're going to write the cation name followed by the name of the anion and we're going to end up with copper 1 oxide.